working with Holly Barnard from uh, oops, CU Boulder and, from, and with Kamini Singha from Colorado School of Mines. And Jackie's uh, communications mentor is Hannah Griss. So today, Jackie will be talking to us about using electrical resistivity imaging to examine soil moisture and tree transpiration interactions. Uh, testing. <laughs> um. Good morning, everyone. Uh, like Aisha said, I'm Jacqueline Romero, and I spent my summer doing interdisciplinary research pertaining to uh, electrical resistivity imaging, which is a geophysical method, uh, and its application to a study related more to hydrology and eco-hydrology. Specifically, I was looking at soil moisture content and how it might be affected by tree transpiration processes. So with that said, electrical resistivity imaging is a fairly new method in the hydrology field. So it, our project, or with our project, we hope to establish electrical resistivity as a method to further analyze and make hypotheses about the interactions between trees and soil and streams. And we're studying this because there's been many other studies that have seen a similar pattern between transpiration and stream flow discharge that they both show a similar diurnal pattern, and many studies have tried to identify what the connection between these two processes is. And why this is important is because if trees are affecting the amount of water in streams, then that means they're affecting how much water is then available for humans to use. So we want to understand uh, what the connection is and if trees really are affecting stream flow discharge and the way that our uh, soil moisture comes in is that we believe trees are drawing directly from the drawing water directly from the soil, which then reduces the amount of soil, I mean, of water in the soil, which then affects how much water drains into streams. So, uh, with electrical resistivity imaging, we're hoping to get values of electrical resistivity in the soil around a focal tree and in the end try to come up try to create these electrical resistivity images this is just an example uh, about that would contour and color code where certain resistivities are throughout the day and the way that water is related to resistivity is that water is very conducive to electricity so whenever there's higher amounts of water in the soil then that means there's less resistivity and lower amount of water means higher resistivity. So our setup specifically is around a ponderosa pine, and we have an eight by eight grid of stainless steel electrodes in the ground. There's only 63 because the tree is in the way of one of the electrodes. So uh, we use, we have an iris Cisco Pro, which is what we use to collect data. Uh, the electrical resistivity data, and then there also we have a car battery, which is the one drawing the current into the ground. So the way this works, we have two electrodes, and A and B are the ones drawing current into the ground, and then M and N are the ones collecting, measuring the voltage that is then returned from, from the soil. And that's how we can get the resistivity in the soil. And the Further, sorry, the further away that these electrodes are from each other, the deeper we can see into the soil. So this is very uh, raw data um, when we first downloaded from the, from the Cisco Pro. Um, we just graph it to see if we can see a diurnal signal. And here we can. You see that in April 9th, it's kind of crazy. So if all the data was like that, then we wouldn't be getting uh, what we need and this data would be useless. But here we just have the survey at the bottom and then resistivity on the y-axis. And the survey just 
depends on what time of day we start. Usually we start around 9 in the morning and go for about 30 hours each day. We also had, um, we used a heat pulse method to track the sap flow in trees and relate that to the transpiration processes of the tree. And we had this data in order to have something to compare our electric resistivity data from the soil and, and then determine to, if we were seeing similar patterns between both, both data sets. So the setup here was we have a heater in the center that sends a heat pulse into the, into the sap, sap of the tree, and then two thermocouple sensors that then measure the temperature in the sap inside the tree. And then we relate the heat dissipation to the velocity of the sap inside, which then is related to the transpiration of the tree. Here we have um, the graphs or the data that we collected for the month of June, which is the data set that I focused on. And um, up here you see on June 3rd, and well, throughout all these months, you see that both the soil resistivity, which is the green line, and the sap flow uh, graph is the red one. They both have a similar pattern, where here the, we start early in the morning, like I said, around 9, I think, June 24th was when we started the earliest at 7 in the morning. But sap flow is highest, so that's when the tree's transpiring the most. Uh, because it's during the day, the sun's out, the tree's photosynthesizing and going through all its processes, so it's obviously using a lot more water. And then the green line shows that the soil resistivity is highest, so that means there's less water in the soil. First, as you can see, the lines don't match up exactly. So we've corrected them for time lags, and once we corrected them, we saw a higher correlation between the two graphs. Uh, we saw a range between 0.86 and 0.95 of a correlation coefficient, which represents that there is a high, strong, positive correlation. And usually one is the number that uh, you base off of to determine that it's a strong, positive correlation. So here I'm just focusing on a little bit more on a specific day. This was the day with our highest correlation, which was 0.95, and you can see that clearly it matches up a lot better than some of the other data sets. Uh, but I just wanted to point out again, when we have the highest sap flow, we have the highest resistivity, which means the lowest uh, amount of water, as I pointed out over here. And during the night time, which is, this is midnight, uh, you can see that it's a lower resistivity, which is higher amount of water in the soil, and lower transpiration because the tree's sleeping, we could say. Um, there was also soil, soil moisture sensors in the area, uh, but they're single point sensors, so they only measure the resistivity at the point that they're at. And we, there was two, one at 10 centimeters and one at 30 centimeters, and we compared uh, that data to the, our electrical resistivity data in order to see if they correlated. But you can see that uh, the soil moisture sensor data is a lot more noisier than our electrical resistivity data. And that just helps support that electrical resistivity is a lot better at seeing smaller and deeper changes in soil moisture, especially around the root zone of our, of our tree. So in conclusion, that was pretty quick. Um, what we learned was that soil resistivity and sap flow data both demonstrate the diurnal pattern that we were expecting, so that's a good sign. And our so and use the average of the lag between our um, data set was about three to four hours. And comparing the soil moisture data, the soil moisture sensor data, to our electrical resistivity data, we also see that um, electrical resistivity data is a lot better at measuring the soil moisture. And so our electrical resistivity data is very promising. So once we get to um, the future steps where we can create the images that I talked about earlier and going to talk a little bit more again, then hopefully we'll be able to see the pl flow paths of the water in the subsurface and see where water is traveling throughout the day. So um, in one of the previous pictures, we had you, you might have been able to see that the tree was also instrumented with electrodes. But right now, we don't have temperature data. And when we corrected the soil data for temperature, we saw a huge change. 
So we didn't want to analyze the tree data yet before correcting it for these other factors. Um, so once we get that data, we'll be able to correct the tree as well and then be able to collect data from the tree and be, hopefully be able to image that. Um, and in order to create the electrical resistivity images that I've been talking about, we have to invert the data, which technically means um, putting the data through code that then creates another little grid among this bigger grid um, and gives us values for each of those little squares. So then we have a lot more point, like electrical resistivity data points and can then create more uh, higher, I guess, quality images of the subsurface. And so once we, this is another example of electrical resistivity images, but once we have those images, we can analyze uh, the data and be able to see, like I said, where the water is flowing throughout the day and if it's going towards the tree or whatever it's doing and be able to create further hypotheses on the interactions between tree transpiration and soil moisture content. So I would just like to end by restating the importance of understanding those interactions by um, saying that, that not only because they might affect how much water is available for humans, but also in states like Colorado, which are affected a lot by wildfires and tree, uh, beetle infestations, that we can use the understanding of these two interactions by um, studying how watersheds would respond to large tree disturb uh, forest disturbances, such as wildfires and beetle kill infestations. Thank you, and thank you to everyone for being here and who helped me get here and do my project. <laughs>